The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And we are all done with college football week one, which means now we've passed Malik's favorite holiday. And we're on to my favorite holiday week one of the NFL season. Tomorrow night, the Lions play the Chiefs to open up the season. Listen, it's nonstop football for the rest of the year, so I'm happy. I'm all in. Yeah, we're back in the wheelhouse of sports season. And I hate to even bring it up, but as soon as we know it, basketball will also be back as well. And we'll be so busy, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Um, Malik, how was your uh, week one viewing experience for college football? I enjoyed it. There were a few extremely exciting games. uh, A few uh, somewhat disappointments and a good amount of surprises. Yeah. A good amount of surprises. Some things that could shift the season, even though it was week one. Some things that could shift the season. Some dominant performances. Some stinkers from a few teams. So, yeah, I I like what I saw. Yeah, from yeah Power 5, G5, some new transfer quarterbacks. I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, Before we go into uh, some of the bigger bigger name teams, let's get our, our teams out of the way. Michigan... Beat East Carolina, no surprise. What was the final score? Thirty to three. Yeah, thirty to three. Should have been like thirty seven to three, but they fumbled at the goal line in the third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they took the starters out. You have any takeaways from the game at all? I my only real takeaway, um, well, I'd have maybe two. JJ McCarthy did he did what a high level quarterback is supposed to do against lower competition. He was close to perfect. Twenty six to thirty. Almost 300 yards and three touchdowns, all to Roman Wilson, who looked great. Mm-hmm. They they were just awesome. Their chemistry is through the roof, and you can already tell. I am like one or two points level concerned out of 10 about the fact that East Carolina didn't just stack the box. They did it almost every play. It seemed like they almost knew what Michigan was going to do mm-hmm. like every other play. Yeah. Like, when a run was coming left, there were, like, four guys there. Run was coming right, there were at least two or three guys there. Mm-hmm. There weren't many running lanes. So, I hope Michigan gets more creative with their runs. Don't be as stubborn as you've been, even though you've dominated with the run game. East, if East Carolina can watch film through the off season, off season and know what your scheme is for the most part, yeah, you got to get a little bit more creative. Mm-hmm. Because Blake Corman, Donovan Edwards will be – extremely high level running backs throughout the season, but right. you got to put them in the best opportunities. So yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Lighten's not lighten, but switch some things up in the run game. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny you say that because uh, just going right over to Michigan state, they beat CMU 31 to seven. And I feel exactly the same way. A tale of two halves. Yeah. A tale of two halves. The first half was awful. Super boring. Was, yeah. It, the red flags were all the way up for Sparty Nation yeah. in the first half. Mm-hmm. Uh, CMU scored the first touchdown of the game. They went up 7-3. to three, And then just at the end of the half, Michigan State got a two-yard run for the touchdown. And that kind of kept them in the game. And then in the second half, it was totally different. They uh, just did everything they could. And... Noah Kim looked pretty good. He started off slow as well, but he he finished the game pretty strong. Uh, he had 279 yards, two touchdowns. And then the surprise for me was, like, I didn't know who most of these guys were <laughs> that stepped up in this yeah. game. Um, Nathan Carter found out he's a transfer. Transfer from UConn. Not very notable, mm-hmm. but he was good at UConn, but they were just bad, so nobody paid attention. Yeah. He's got a little bit of juice to him. Yeah. yeah. He had 113 yards and a touchdown on the ground. 
So that's a little bit, uh, I guess, uh, positive. Yeah, Jalen Berger had a touchdown too, but just three yards of carry. Yeah, and then uh, Jaron Glover made some really good catches. That mm-hmm. was exciting to watch. Got the, those two back-to-back plays at the end of the first half mm-hmm. got them into position to score. Yeah. Uh, so him and I think Tyrell Henry was kind of impressive too, even though he only had two catches. That one-handed touchdown. catch was really nice. Yeah. So it does look like they're they're using a lot of their young guys in the receiving core. Um, so that's good news, but. Uh, it just makes me nervous because they look, they look like they're running the same schemes that they did last year, and everything we know about that is it's it's again it's very predictable. They're going to try to run the ball a lot, but you all you need those go to guys that you know will make plays. Yeah, and it looks like you might have a few, but it's still uh, unknown. Yeah, for the so, most part. So they have they still have a lot to prove. Um, what was up with Malik Carr in that first half? You know, I don't know. He had three drops. Mm-hmm. It it was it was kind of weird. Yeah, he did not look great. He did get the touchdown catch towards the end. Yeah, but again, he's another one of those guys that I kept. I keep saying like every year, I I want him to step up, and he's starting to turn into the Maddie Sissoko of the football team. Unfortunately, well, I think he finished out the year last year pretty strong. Yeah, and wasn't last year his first year at MSU? I don't know. You I know, think, I think you. You made it seem like he's been there like four years. It feels I think la- like it. Last year was like his first full season playing football for Michigan State. I'm pretty uh, sure. Yeah. Well, he was at Purdue the year before that. Full season. No, he was. So he was there in 2021. Oh, okay. Uh, he was in per- at Purdue for 2020. Came to MSU 2021. Had eight catches for 135. Oh, yeah, so he, he barely played. Yeah. And then last year. Last he, year is when he really started playing. But he only had 16 catches. He only had 16 For catches. For 209 yards. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It seems like he had more catches than that. So, wow. yeah, it's just it's just a weird yeah. situation. Their tight end situation is just a mess. Um, defense held up pretty decently. Um, Central had a couple times where they looked like they were going to march down the field. Um, and Michigan State stopped them, which was nice to see, but it's a little bit nerve-wracking that they let them get that far down the field. Um, now they play Richmond. Michigan plays UNLV. Should be more of the same. Yeah, we're just we're just looking for slight improvements at this. point. MSU put up forty at least. This is Richmond. Yeah, put on the put up the points. Yeah, so we'll see. All right, talking about the some of the big boys. I want to do. I named it a reality check. I got four teams okay. that I want to tell. I want you to tell me, are they real or are they fake? Sounds good. I like this. And the number one has to be the biggest name of the weekend, I think. Well, not Colorado. Florida State. Are they real or are they fake? They are now number four. Well, you might be wrong. I think Colorado ring. actually was the biggest name. But yeah, the, that's the I mean. best team right. everybody saw this weekend. Yes. Are they for real or not? Because now their aspirations, people immediately are putting them into the college football playoff. This is the first time, many people said this, and I believe it's true. This is the first time Florida State has looked like like this in a decade. Mm-hmm. Literally, 2013, when Jameis Winston became the starter at Florida State, and they went on that national championship run. Yeah, this is what they looked like to start the season. They went to they went to Death Valley against Clemson, and they just absolutely stomped them. Mm-hmm. This one, a neutral site game in Orlando, kind of like a pseudo home game. And the first half was kind of back and forth. They made some mistakes. LSU looked better overall. The second half, Florida State just, they looked like the best team in the country in that second half. Mm-hmm. You, you're talking every position, athletes, just, they played hard, they played physical, they played smart, and they, they got playmakers. Mm-hmm. Johnny Wilson, 6'7", 230, had two very bad drops in the first half. Still ended up with seven catches for like 109. Yeah. And that other receiver. Yeah. The guy that wore green and white last year, mm-hmm. but is now a Florida State Seminole, Keon Coleman. Yeah. Listen, you want to talk about a freak of nature, man. This dude, he was he couldn't be stopped. At some point, I think it was in the third quarter, he was pointing out a specific LSU DB that was on him and just looking at the sideline, pointing to him, saying, like, there, there's nothing he can do with me. Yeah. And then they rotated him. And put another corner on him, and it still didn't matter. Mm-hmm. 
Like, the, it, he looked like he was playing against children. Yeah. And in that second half, Florida State looked like they were playing against a peewee football team. Mm. They made them quit. Florida State is for real. Yeah. They look like Florida State <laughs> used to in their glory days. Yeah. And it's been it's been a while, but this is what they used to look like. Yeah. They look like an all-around good team. Um, I will say, I don't think Keon Coleman – I listened to some guys talk on the radio, um, and they made some sense where – Keon Coleman probably wouldn't have looked this good at Michigan State even this year. Just the way that they run their schemes and the way their offense now, they, runs. They would have targeted him a ton, Yeah, but putting him in, in these specific positions, yeah. Yeah, I think Florida State is just a good good fit for him. And having Johnny Wilson on the other side, yeah. he's going to have a ton of one-on-one matchups. Mm-hmm. And now to the other team that was talked about the most. So I got two teams that played really well, two teams that didn't play as well. Uh, Colorado, are they real or are they fake? So this depends on what real means to you. <laughs> if are they a bowl game team? That's I'll I'll set the expectations to that is extremely realistic. So I will say real. Okay. Before this game, I said if they won four games, it's a success because yeah. they were almost the worst team in power five football last year. Mm -hmm. The offense was beyond terrible. The defense was terrible to go along with it. And there was no, there was nothing to look forward to with Colorado last year. One and 11. Yeah. After this game, the level of quarterback Shador Sanders played completed well over 70% of his, 70% of his passes for over 500 yards and five touchdowns. Mm Hmm. I mean, Dylan Edwards, a true freshman that was going to go to Notre Dame, he had three electrifying touchdowns where he just turned on the gas. He has legit 4-3 speed. Yeah. And then, man, this kid, Travis Hunter, he is the most talented young football player I've seen. I, I don't know, maybe ever. We've never seen somebody play on both sides of the, both sides of the ball at this level from the jump. Like they couldn't stop him at receiver and as a DB, he's locked down. Like I, I just don't know what to say about this kid. Like they have everything it takes to make a bowl game. Hmm. Like one of my best friends was in town over the season and we were watching it together. And before the game, he was saying he thinks they could go eight and four. I was like, I, I can't get there yet. Like even if they win this game, I'm not sure with this level of offense. They can put up points against defense defenses that are average or worse. They can put up 40 on you, like without a blink of an eye, as long as they can keep up this level of offense, which I don't know if they can. It looks like they might be able to because of the talent that Deion Sanders was able to get in the transfer portal. Yeah. What Deion is doing is unprecedented. No team has ever done this. He basically flipped 80 to like 84, 85% of a team. Only a few guys from last year came back. And one of those kids, Trevor Woods, got an interception. The safety, he he picked one off, so that's good for him. But yeah, it, it's so unprecedented that I still can't make a prediction. Mm -hmm. But they've got the talent in the offense to potentially win six to eight games. They could do it. It's possible. They could start 3-0. and Yeah. Because Nebraska, how they looked against Minnesota. Yeah. Yikes. And then they play Colorado State, I believe. Yeah. Um, and Colorado State just got destroyed by Washington State. And then after that is when they play Oregon and then USC. So People are looking forward to those. Yeah. The Pac-12 is no joke, so we'll see how that works out. All right, moving on to one of the top teams that fell, Ohio State. Are they real or are they fake? They're still real. I think... In retrospect, the transition from C.J. Stroud to Kyle McCord, I I just assumed it would be seamless because that's what happens with Ohio State most times. Right. But this is a pretty big transition. They've had a good string of solid yeah. college quarterbacks. Like Kyle McCord was like a high-level four-star guy, but he, he doesn't have the athleticism of the guys before him. He has a good arm, but it's not like on the level of C.J. Stroud where he could put it wherever he wanted to, mm -hmm. kind of from the jump. There's going to be a transition with Ohio State. Now, did I expect their offensive line to look below average to bad? I didn't expect that. I didn't expect 
Indiana's defense looked pretty good. Like their front seven was getting to Ohio State's backfield. Yeah. And yeah, Ohio State's offense looked out of sync from the jump. Like Marvin Harrison had three catches. Emeka Agbuka had two. There were no yeah. big there were no really big plays. Yeah, it, it was it was kinda And Harrison did get the in, had that injury as well. Yeah, he, he also he had a touchdown that was brought back because he stepped out of bounds before he caught it. Yeah. So yeah, it, it wasn't impressive. But I guess a win is a win in week one when you're transitioning. But they're still Ohio State, so I can understand why fans would be so upset. Yeah. Like they are. So I'm not gonna say they're fake, but they they got some things to fix. Yeah. They, they got a do. reality check. Yes. And the other team that struggled that was headlined. Listen. <laughs> They fell from number nine to they go they went to twenty five right. Like, Let me check. I, I, I think they went. To, I think they went to twenty five. They should they should almost be unranked. Yeah, they went to twenty five. This right here. Yeah, they went to twenty five. Twenty fifth. They dropped sixteen spots. Just because people are giving Duke oh. the benefit of the doubt right now. Listen, man. The Clemson Tigers. Are they real or I, are they fake? I can't believe. What I saw Monday night. <laughs> I mean, the writing was kind of on the wall that Clemson might have some issues or regress mm-hmm. because Dabo just won't adjust to the times. Like he openly says in press conferences and to reporters that we don't like the transfer portal. We we stick to our guys that we've brought in for the past four years and that we're bringing in. We're a family what kind of family just goes into the transfer portal all the time? Yeah. I trust my coaches. 28-7. to seven. To, I'm, I'm not even going to, like, say it like Duke, should, like, is a, it's an, a complete embarrassment to lose to Duke mm-hmm. because Mike Elko is completely turning that program around. Yeah, they had and, a solid end of their season yeah, last and year. And Riley Leonard is probably going to be an NFL draft pick. They have some talent, and they're turning it around, and I'm happy for Duke. But you are two-time national champion, predicted once again to probably make the ACC championship and win the conference again. You're those Clemson Tigers. Yeah. K. Klubnik, high-level five-star quarterback. Will Shipley, one of the best running backs in the country. You got some pros on defense. Mm -hmm. And you go out there and lay one of the biggest week one eggs I think I've ever seen. I mean, Garrett Riley comes in from TCU as the new offensive coordinator. What was that? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know whether to blame him more or just the lack of weapons. When was the last time you saw just, like, no explosiveness from a Clemson receiving core? Yeah. Like, it it, it was just weird mm-hmm. how just dry it seemed. Will Shipley was, like, the only thing to be afraid of on that offense. I was going to say, it seemed like he was the only one that could get anything going. It it. And when when they got good drives, they got to the red zone and they fumbled twice. Yeah, just absolute confidence killers. Mm-hmm. And you, you could see in Dabo's body language and his facial expressions, after mistake after mistake, let Duke score another mistake, let Duke score again. But halfway through the fourth, it seemed like all his energy was just gone. Yeah, and in the post game presser, you could see he he did not see this coming at all. Which is kind of the problem mm-hmm. because, like I said, Dabo has just stuck to what he knows yeah, and won't adjust to the times. In the past few years, people have said, these wide receiving cores don't look the same. Mm-hmm. No Justin Ross. The other guys, those those dogs, those freaks, they don't look the same. Dabo stuck to his receivers. Hey, do you need to fill these gaps, offensive line, some of these places? Stick with stick with, stick with my guys. Kind of say, until he hired Garrett Riley, he stuck with his coaches also. Yeah, and it is just coming back all back to him, mm-hmm. blown up in his face. Yeah, and we've already begun to see teams that you know don't utilize the transfer portal. It can hurt a team. It also can hurt if you use it too much. Look at what it's done for Florida State. Yeah, Mike Norvell did it. He hit every area where they needed help, and got the right player out of the transfer portal in the past two years. Mm-hmm. That's how he got Florida State Florida State back to where they are. And the complete opposite is Dabo Sweeney. Yeah. He just rejects it. You need a good balance. Yeah. 
So, yeah. So Clemson, fake. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, don't, Listen, I play, don't know who they play. Florida State in two weeks. That'll be fun. <laughs> and it's at Clemson. That will be ugly if they get blown out at home. Yeah. It it won't be good. Mm-hmm. A one and two start for a number nine Clemson. <sighs> well, they're number twenty five now. <laughs> what was a number nine Clemson? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Anything else from week one that you want to mention before we move on? Uh, a few things. The Pac-12 really is the conference of quarterbacks because Caleb Williams was elite once again. Mm-hmm. Michael Penix made his debut against Boise State and just bombed them over and over again. His he, deep ball accuracy is just incredible. He could be the Heisman winner. Hey, I, I picked Washington to win the Pac-12 going out on that limb. Yeah. Shador Sanders put up his numbers. He's coming. Oregon, Bo Nix, they beat Portland State 81-7. to That that was just unfortunate. There were some high-scoring games. Yeah. Cam Ward for Washington State, he put up really good numbers. Dante Moore made his debut for UCLA. Mm -hmm. They started Ethan Garbers. He looked kind of shaky. Put in Dante Moore, they scored twice. Yeah. So I have a feeling from this point on, Dante will either start or get a majority of the snaps. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was just high-level offense all throughout the Pac-12. DJ... We young Lele. Yeah. Uh, they blamed him for a lot of stuff at Clemson over the past year. And he looked great in his first game at Oregon State. Now, it was against San Jose State. Right. But he had a lot of time in the pocket. Mm-hmm. He was cool, calm, comfortable, and he dropped some deep dimes. Yeah. He has to be laughing at what happened at Clemson on Monday night. Yeah. Because, yeah, they put too much on him. And he wasn't that bad last year. Mm-hmm. Good for DJ. <laughs> Yeah, Pac-12 looked really good. Yeah. So now we'll move on to week two. And, uh, again, there's not too many crazy games um, once again. But uh, what's what's the game you would say to look out for? Texas-Alabama. The game of Saturday, 730. Mm -hmm. Quinn Ewers in Texas versus Jalen Milrow in Alabama. I think this is a big defining game for both these teams' seasons, honestly. I know it. It, it sounds crazy to be only the second game. It it does actually. It means a lot. Yeah. For both of these teams. Um, because Texas is trying to make sure that Quinn Ewers is the guy. They almost beat him last year. And Alabama, nobody really like. They didn't look Alabama esque in Week One. I think they still look really good. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, they. I think they look good enough to. I don't know. I didn't expect them to beat Middle Tennessee like seventy to three. Hmm. But I I was happy with what I saw from Alabama. Yeah. So that'll be a fun one. All right. Tomorrow night, it's happening. The Lions are opening the season against the Chiefs. I don't think you're as excited as I am, but I'm so excited. And I hope you're somewhat uh, listen, excited. Listen, I'm not I'm I can't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> they they hurt me too much. Like Michigan has hurt me several times, but mm-hmm. that's like a lifelong a lifelong allegiance for me. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think I have any teams outside of that that like the the Detroit Lions can't hurt me like that. I had yeah. to give it up. I had to. Yeah, I think uh, I'm starting to feel the Kool Aid a little bit. It scares me. Uh, it should. It's it not, definitely should. It's honestly a weird feeling. Um, but I'm just excited for this game. Either way, the Lions will get to go to Arrowhead, so it's a it's a tough tough road game. Um, but they're getting a little bit of help. The Chiefs maybe it most likely will be it without Chris Jones. There came out a report today that like he could sign, and then he says he's ready to play tomorrow. I, I can't imagine that happening. That that to me doesn't make sense. He doesn't have a contract. I don't know how he could say he's ready to go per se because he hasn't. I don't think he's been with the team for a little while. I don't know. So that's weird to me. And then just yesterday, Travis Kelsey hyperextended his leg. And so he's got, according to his brother, has some swelling in his leg, which usually is not a great sign. Um, It's not like a crazy injury that he might miss like a lot of time, but he could most likely miss tomorrow night. I'm sure we'll get more updates throughout the day, but I haven't heard anything. They might just wait till tomorrow because there's no reason to, you know, say it ahead of time. And you could always throw the Lions off by saying, yeah, Travis Kelsey's ready to go. He's going to play. And then the Lions didn't account for that or something like that. Um, 
So possibly the Chiefs might be without their best defensive player, and and most likely. And it's very, very likely that they'll be without their arguably their best offensive player. Obviously, is Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, but Travis Kelsey is also what makes that offense go. Yeah. Um, does that take like the excitement out of the game at all for you? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. It would, now, would it be nice to see the best tight end in football play? Yes. Yeah. But I think it's even more intriguing seeing that taken away from Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And I, I I think we all agree that we'll most likely still see regular Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. But, like, I want to see how he spreads it out from the receivers. Like, besides Travis Kelsey, they have Noah Gray and Blake Bell. I'm sure both of them will play. I wonder how much he'll target the tight ends without Travis Kelsey being there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Who who's the number one receiver? Who's going to be the guy to have the most catches? Nobody knows. Because a lot of people think it's like Sky Moore could emerge, but mm-hmm. Marquez Valdez-Scanling, he's had his games. Yeah. Um, Kadarius Tony's supposed to play. Yeah. The Who's the other receipt? Number 84. Like, he came out of nowhere last year. Uh, are you talking about Justin Watson? Yeah, Wa- Justin Watson has made some big catches. Is he still on the team? I'm pretty sure. He might be. I, yeah. I know he made like, a lot of plays for them last there year. There was like somebody. I'd that, be surprised if he didn't make the team. Yeah. Well, there was like somebody that got moved or something. I th- yeah. I thought, but but also I have Isaiah Pacheco on my <laughs> fantasy team. I'm pretty sure he's going to get a lot of targets out of the backfield. Yeah. As well as getting some run out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm interested in seeing how Patrick Mahomes. Like spreads it spreads it all throughout the offense now, without Travis Kelsey getting like fourteen targets. Yeah, they still they do still have Justin yeah. Watson, but they did add Richie James. I forgot about that. Okay, um, the young Rishi Rice. A lot of people are excited about. Yeah, I forgot about Rishi Rice. Um, so once again, they got a lot of different guys they could throw it to. Yeah, you you have no idea who the guy can be when Travis Kelsey is out. So that's very interesting to me. Yeah, and and they don't. I want to say I heard a stat where like Travis Kelsey has like never missed a game due to injury or something. Hmm. Um, and so if he is gone, this would be the first time I think that, uh, Patrick Mahomes has played a game without Travis Kelsey or Tyreek Hill. I think don't quote me on it. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of with you. I'm, I'm curious what they would do in that situation. Probably not much different to be honest. I think the last time that Travis Kelsey missed a game, they only threw their tight end like a couple times, but they did have Tyreek Hill. So. That changes things. Um, but they definitely have a lot of weapons. Um, I'm more intrigued to see like how the, the Lions defense improves. Because this will be a huge test going against the Super Bowl champs. We know how Patrick Mahomes is good at just spreading the ball around. I wonder what they key on with Travis Kelsey out. Yeah. And like, how do they just send constant pressure on Pat Mahomes? Right. And because Andy Reid is super creative with his play calling. Yeah. Um so yeah, I don't. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know that. I think that's a problem. Like you can't really key in on anything. Um. I would honestly almost dare them to run the ball. That logically makes the so, most sense. Yeah, you just have people sit back in coverage. Mm-hmm. Um. Now I don't know if that works because Kansas City does have a good offensive line, so we'd have to be able to show that we can get pressure, which, again, yeah. is a good de- uh, a good test for our front seven. Isaiah Pacheco runs really hard, so mm-hmm. he, he could have himself a night. Yeah, he's got some speed to him. Um, and we know the Lions struggled against the run last year, but at the end of the season, they actually played really good against yeah. the run. Was that Carolina Panthers game? That was in the last half, right? Yeah. That was like the one game where yes. it was just, yeah. Yep, that was their one mess-up game when they, they changed their defense – um, they immediately started stopping running backs and hardly anybody had a good game against them except for that stinking Carolina game. Um, the, oh, the other thing I was going to say, if Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones are both out, does that make it more of a must win scenario for the Lions? I wouldn't say it's a must win. I'd say... The yeah, the probability goes up for them to win if Travis Kelsey is out. Mm-hmm. But like I said, Pat Mahomes is still Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Unless you are getting like a serious high level of pressure on him where Kansas City's O line just looks terrible. Yeah. 
I don't see many scenarios where Pat Mahomes isn't making plays. Mm-hmm. Like it, it does. The danger doesn't drop off. Yeah, it only it slightly does, mm-hmm. but it yeah you still have to be afraid. Yeah, and, and then aware. looking on the Lions side, Jared Goff finished the season fantastic last year, throwing almost no interceptions. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown hoping to take even another step up. And then we got the dynamic duo of David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs in the backfield. There's been talk about Jameer Gibbs being used even more of a utility guy for this game, especially. Um, What do you think the Lions have to do to win this game? Well, I would say even if it doesn't just instantly come from Hutch and James Houston and even those interior guys just getting pressure pressure naturally, Mm -hmm. rushing the front four, you got to scheme up some really creative blitzes. Something to get Patrick Mahomes somehow, make him uncomfortable. Because mm-hmm. he's pretty good at seeing everything on the field, where blitzes come from, when to take off running, when to get the ball out. He's pretty good at those things. Yeah. But there are some teams, and a team in particular I just thought of, that made it very hard for him and challenged the Chiefs both times. And I can't remember if they won once last season. The Raiders. Did they ever beat them once or did they lose both times? Um, I can't even remember. Neither, neither game was really a blowout. Yeah. But Max Crosby, in particular, mm-hmm. made that game hell for Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Like, Pat Mahomes was getting frustrated because mm-hmm. there were a few plays where he was, like, bump him after the play. Yep. He would start getting into his head, and then he was starting to, yeah, get a few sacks. And the Raiders were create, able to create a, few, a little bit more pressure along with that, too. Mm-hmm. So maybe you watch film of what the Raiders did. Yeah. And Aiden Hutchinson just plays the Max Crosby role. But, yeah, they've they got to make him uncomfortable. Yeah. If he's comfortable, there's no way to stop him. Right. Deep, in, in, I mean, intermediate, short. He's going to be accurate at every single level if you let him get time. Yeah. And then they're going to start running the ball. Yeah. And then MVS. Kadarius, Tony, Sky Moore, they're all kind of speed guys. Uh, so you got to be able to keep up with that. Um, and we'll have to see how the, the line secondary is improved. Um, so with that, we start a whole new slate of picks. Before, well, we're, we're going to do that pick. So, yeah, let, let's just wait till we get to that game. Okay. We'll wait. Yeah, I was going to say. You want to save that one for last or first? <laughs> since Let's just do it first. This is tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. do. That's why I went right to it. Okay. Who do you got, Detroit or Kansas City? I'm going with Detroit. I can't. <laughs> it's the first game of the season. I have to. I love how quickly that was. I am going to go. Yeah, it's it's week one. I'm going to go with the hometown team. I'm going to go Detroit. This might be a bad omen. We might be <laughs> jinxing them, but it'd be really cool to see them do it. They can do it. Yeah. They can. Like I said, they could be on top of the NFL for a couple days. Yeah. Which would be great. Um. Also, I was going to add – to thinking this this year do we want to use the spread when we do picks or do we want to keep it how we've been doing just straight up well I, let's think about that for later okay let's let's just i wasn't to gonna say it for this right week now. but just yeah we can forward. spice things up later it was just a thought because maybe, maybe it's like we get later into the season maybe okay we'll think about it yeah just because of games like houston at baltimore I'm going with Baltimore. Yeah. I, I would, too, for the most part. <laughs> Rookie quarterback. Um, Lamar Jackson. Do we both expect Lamar Jackson to come out kind of with a fire? Yeah. yeah. They're supposed to be a, a much higher-paced offense, which is exciting to see. Um, should be fun. Uh, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Who you got? No Joe Burrow. What? Uh, he's playing. He's playing? Yeah, he's on track to play. Is that like, did that come out today or did I just miss news well, in the last week? They're days? talking about. Like, I saw he was playing, I mean, in practice. Yeah. I saw he was practicing. They're saying that if he gets his, through his full practice today, that he'd pretty much play. If Joe Burrow plays and he is healthy, I'm taking the Bengals. Yeah. If he do, if he didn't play, I'd take the Browns, but I'm taking the Bengals mm-hmm. if, he, if Joe Burrow plays. Um, I'm going to go with Cleveland just for this one. Shout out to Chris. Um, maybe Nick Chubb is able to run all over the Bengals. Maybe Deshaun Watson's better, but highly unlikely. Tampa Bay at Minnesota. Baker Mayfield starting his career with the Bucks. Can they take down the Vikings? 
I'm taking Tampa Bay. Oh, it's funny because I thought about taking Tampa Bay. Yeah, I, I think it's a. Uh, there's always a few games that are weird in Week One. Yeah, whether it's a good team losing, or yeah, so yeah, I think they surprised Tampa Bay. I think Baker has a good Week One game. Last year, Minnesota's defense was suspect. Yeah. Suspect. They they had a lot of breaks, a lot of games that led them to having a really good record. Mm-hmm. I think him and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin kind of connect in the first game, and Tampa Bay wins a close one. Yeah. Tampa Bay still got a decent defense. So as long as, like, Baker is decent, I think he could do it. He's got Mike Evans. He's got Chris Godwin. Um, Rashad White going into the full-time uh, running back one role now. I'm still going to go with Minnesota just to make the difference, but I do see how Tampa Bay can maybe do it. Uh, Tennessee at New Orleans. Derek Carr now New Orleans co- quarterback. DeAndre Hopkins now the number one in Tennessee. There's some weird things going on with both of these I'm teams. I'm going to go Tennessee. Oh, okay. I think to start the season, Ryan Tannehill, regular season is what we're talking about. Because you really can't trust either of these guys much in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. But Ryan Tannehill, I trust him in a regular season setting for the most part. And I think Derrick Henry still has it. I don't think he's declining yet. I think having DeAndre Hopkins is big. That could help get Traylon Burks open. Mm-hmm. And Tajay Spears is going to be a real weapon. And I think anytime you bring him in, he's going to be fresh and ready to make something happen. So yeah, I'm going Tennessee. Okay. I'm going to go with New Orleans. It's just the home team in this scenario. I think New Orleans' defense is good enough. Um, Derek Carr having a guy like Chris Olave should be really nice, fun to see. New Orleans' running game will be suspect with basically only Jamal Williams ready to go. Um, so that makes me a little bit nervous, but I think is I'll – Michael Thomas playing? Yeah. But who knows how he's going to be at this point. I'm not counting on him. Carolina at Atlanta. I think I'm going to go with the number one pick here. I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. I've seen a lot of people be that are already completely out on the Panthers because of how they looked in preseason. I think they're going to be better than people think. They gave Miles Con- Miles, San- Miles Sanders, Jesus, oh, Pete, uh, <laughs> a decent contract. They got Adam Thielen, so they have a veteran there. Um, their receivers did get banged up a little bit, DJ Shark and Terrace Marshall, but that's going to – leapfrog Jonathan Mingo into a starting spot. I think their defense is also going to be pretty good. Um, So, I don't know. I think people are starting to buy too much into the Atlanta hype. So, this game could go either way, but I'm going to go with Carolina. I trust Bryce Young more than Desmond Ritter. (laughs) (sighs) I'm going to go Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. I, I I I don't know. I feel like I like Atlanta's pieces more than Carolina. That's really just what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, that, that's I like the hard pieces part. More. Yeah, will they come together? Yeah, or will Arthur Smith allow them? Jacksonville at Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson is the starter. Jacksonville, but he's got nobody. Yeah. yeah I I kind of I feel bad for Anthony Richardson. Yeah. It it seems like his career, if it gets off to a bad start, how does it get better after yeah. this? Like, what are they going to add? Mm-hmm. They might. They're, they're, they're the, just in an odd place. I think the scary thing is if they still struggle, they may just say, hey, we like Caleb Williams more. That would be insane. <laughs> it would be, but I, I could see it happening, and that would be sad. Yeah. San Francisco at Pittsburgh. They named Anthony Richardson the captain. Can I know. you imagine them drafting Caleb Williams? Yeah. I've, oh, my. Yeah. Tough, tough business. 49ers at the Steelers. Two really good defenses. I am going Steelers week one. Okay. Yeah. Kenny Pickett. Ready to make I the like up. the 49ers. Uh they are their roster is still built to win a championship, even though they've made several mistakes over the past few years. Yeah. And uh breaking news, Nick Bosa just became the richest NFL, I mean defensive player in NFL history. Hmm. Five years, 170 million. Jeez, old Pete. 122 guaranteed. Jeez. So, you know, he's. If Jonathan he's healthy, Taylor is rolling <laughs> in his grave already, and if he's Nick, not in yeah. the grave. If Nick both is healthy, he's he's one of the best in the league. Yeah. But I there's just something about this Steelers team. 
I, there's a good chance I'm completely wrong about this game. But I feel like Kenny Pickett and that offense are going to come out looking really good. J.J. Watt is going to sack Brock Purdy a few times, mm-hmm. make him uncomfortable. And the Steelers just go with it. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the Steelers could be much improved this year. Um, I think Deontay Johnson and George Pickens are a good one, too, for the receivers. They got Najee Harris. He's still kind of a unknown quantity. Kenny Pickett probably makes an upgrade. I have to go with San Francisco just because they should be one of the better teams in the NFC. So I will take it where I can. And then we got Arizona at Washington, the dud of the week. You're not taking Arizona. I'm not allow- obviously not. I'm not allowing it. Sam Howell starts getting comfortable in this game. Yeah. Terry McLaurin might play in this game as well. So Washington should have all their weapons. They could be another sneaky good team. Who starts, Josh Jobs or Clayton Toon? Clayton Toon was there all training camp. He I don't know. Offense more. I feel like you don't just bring in Josh Dobbs for. Who was the backup behind Clayton Toon? I don't know. I mean, they got rid of Colt McCoy. So I, I, I would assume they didn't have one, and that's why they got Josh Dobbs. Um, But I don't know. Josh Dobbs has the experience. I think he starts. To me, it just makes more sense. Just play Clayton Toon. He looked bad, if you are though. going, If you are going to Clayton Toon? Yeah, I don't think he looked very good in the preseason. I think he looked all right. Okay. The Cardinals are also bad, so what yeah. is a rookie quarterback supposed to do with that? They are. And also, if you want to tank. But, like, they have some decent offensive if weapons. If you want to tank. They're not tanking, okay? Oh, <laughs> really? They're in win mode. That's what you're saying, Joey? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's the NFL. We all want to win. Yeah, <laughs> we're all in win mode. All right. Las Vegas at Denver. Man, did you see Sean Payton call out Russell <laughs> Russell Wilson? Uh, didn't he say something about, like, I need him to stop kissing babies? Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I need more Sean Payton sound bites. Oh, boy. They give him a microphone all the time. I'm taking the Broncos. Oh, okay. I'm probably wrong, but I don't know. I just I, I believe in Sean Payton, and Russ could come out and look normal <laughs> for week one. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Raiders. The Raiders get me every year, so I'll probably feel bad about this game right it's after. It's a big problem. So, yeah, I don't know. The Raiders, I always think, are going to be better than they are. This is kind of my fun game of the week. The Dolphins at the Chargers. The two quarterbacks taken in the same draft. Which one's better? Tua, Justin Herbert. I'm going with the Chargers. I love Justin Herbert. I love the Chargers. They're a fun team to That's watch. That's not good for you, Joey. That is not good for your health. It's not. I, I, it would be better. The Chargers. So it would be better. You can't for, love the Lions and the Chargers. It would be better for my health if Brandon Staley was not the head coach of Listen, the Chargers. If but, they were, they if they were still in San Diego and things made sense for the Chargers, it would make sense to like the Chargers. But the Los Angeles Chargers? Yeah. No way. I can never believe in them. Give me Miami. All right. Listen, Tua is Tua got some bulk on him. He got some muscle. Just because he, he's and, doing... And he knows how to roll instead of taking a bad hit. He knows how to roll. However, just because he was doing jujitsu or taekwondo Listen, or whatever he was doing. He's about to be out there like Neo in the Matrix. He's just going <laughs> to make things happen, all right? All right. <laughs> Miami. <laughs> offense. Oh, boy. Eagles at the Patriots. Eagles. Yeah. I think the Patriots are in trouble. I think they could be... Sneaky good. How? That dude with their, the pen, listen, I guess their defense is that dude right. with the pencil in his ear isn't calling plays anymore. And I think that's a bump within itself. Maybe. Mac Jan- Mac Mac Jones might regain confidence because that man killed all of the most of what he had. But let me time. ask you, who's he throwing the ball to? <laughs> Juju? Kendrick Bourne. <laughs> Juju. A tight end I can't remember them signing. Is it uh Mike Gesicki? Mike Gis- hey Mike Gesicki got some hands, and they got Hunter Henry, and Devontae Parker, Andre Stevenson. They got Zeke getting all them touchdowns in the red zone. Look, ten oh. win, ten win Patriots, ten and seven Patriots. Who you know, come? You, like, do, you, do you know what division the Patriots are in? I didn't say they're. I said ten and seven. That's not be, that's not beating the Bills. <laughs> so listen, second place maybe wild card, ten and seven. That's a successful season. What? They also have to beat the Dolphins and the Jets. 10-7. and 10-7 <laughs> so Patriots. They lose all their division games, but they win every other game? 10-7 Wait, Patriots. so you're saying they have to 
beat Philadelphia here and then basically lose. Uh, then they, they can lose not, all their division games. They're not beating Philadelphia here. So that's their first loss. They're beating then, the Jets. They're beating the Jets and the Dolphins at least once. Okay, so they're split. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can't wait to see how that plays There's, out. I, I, full, I, you can. <laughs> We're, we'll remember this. Record this. Quote it. The Patriots are beating both the Jets and the Dolphins. I feel at like least you have once. more more faith in the Patriots than the Chargers. Uh, yes, they're the Patriots. That's got to be a problem. Bill Belichick is still the coach. Things are still possible. We got to pinpoint these. What I'm saying right now makes sense. The Chargers are the Chargers, Joey. That will never change. You know what the Chargers are. They are who we thought they were. In, in the words of the great Dennis Green, R.I.P. They are who we thought they were. Green Bay at Chicago. Two unknown quantities of the NFC North. Justin That's- Fields hype. Jordan Love optimism. DJ Moore. <laughs> Christian Watson. Yeah, they're very comparable. Hmm. Where do I go? Decent running back rooms. Where do I go? I'm going to go with uh, I'm gonna go with Green Bay. Okay. I really like how Jordan Love looked in the preseason, even though his – Skill talent is young. They can really make plays. Mm-hmm. You got some freaky talent in there. I'm in- excited to see both of the rookie tight ends, Tucker Craft and um, Luke, Musgrave. Luke, Luke Musgrave for Green Bay. And I think their defense, they might just key in on Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Like, if you stop him from running, what makes you believe he's just going to stand back there dropping dimes? Yeah. There's no evidence outside of his last game of, of college against Clemson. Yeah. So give me the Packers. You're going to hope for uh, DJ Moore to take uh, bubble screens to the house every game. Slants and bubbles. That yeah. sounds ridiculous. Slants and bubbles. <laughs> that might be it, though. I'll go with Chicago. I think this is a toss-up. you up. sure? I'm not sure. Okay. But uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think Chicago's definitely improved. Um I don't know how their defense is going to be. That's that's a question mark for me. I think Green Bay's defense is much better. Um, but I'm going to say that Justin Fields is going to take another step up. And uh, the rotation of running backs that Chicago has, I think, at this point, could be better than Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Rashad Johnson hasn't played yet. Khalil Herbert hasn't started yet. <laughs> he started a little bit. I think David Montgomery is out It's a couple going to rounds. take a lot for them to prove they're better than those yeah. two. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's going to take a lot. Um, Rams at the Seahawks. Oh, my God. That, uh, Are the Rams a watchable team? They might not be, Joey. They might not be. Like, Matthew Stafford doesn't have a connection with his young guys. Who is the best receiver for the Rams? Van Since Jefferson. Cup, it, <laughs> if Puka the, Nakua? Listen, if Ben Skoranek is your number two, listen. I think Puka Nakua has... Jumped. He needs to be. Already. He needs to be. Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby is a really good. He's tight probably end. their best receiver. But uh, healthy Cam Akers is good. But St- Stafford, man. Yeah. Is is he over the hill or does their he offensive have line hasn't gotten any better? So is he last year Philip Rivers or is he last year Matt Ryan? Last year Philip had a little juice left. Yeah. Last year Matt was like, look, come on guys, what are we doing? I don't know. Listen, I, I see at least 12 interceptions coming from Matthew Stafford this season because he's going to force it. If he plays he, that much. He's an old gunslinger, and that's not good for teams in this type of turmoil. Yeah. Seahawks. I could see Stetson Bennett taking over at some point. That would make things interesting. They still wouldn't be good, but it would be no. interesting. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Seattle. It's at it's Seattle, a, too. Sucks so. for Aaron Donald, man. First ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. They got their Super Bowl. I could care less. They they did. They sold their soul for this. Yeah. This is this is why they did it. Mm-hmm. America's team taking on the Giants Sunday night. The Patriots? Is that who you're talking about? America's team? No, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, the Cowgirls. What about them? What about them, Joey? Is it their year? <laughs> I, I, you, I should leave this room. Who are they playing? The Giants. Get, get, listen, man. Give me the Giants. They're t- they're taking on the Mecca. Give me the G Man. I'm going with the Giants too. I got Saquon on one of my fans. I think teams. it's a legit chance Darren Waller has like a big season. Like yeah. Him and Daniel Jones had serious chemistry in mm-hmm. the short amount of time they played in the preseason. 
Yeah. And he's going to get open a lot. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, this might start to be the downfall of Dak Prescott. Thank goodness. Oh, you you think the kid might start this season? I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm just saying I think this could be the start yeah, of the You downfall. said downfall. Oh, the beginning just, of the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're kind, not gonna, kind, of, kind of like how it took three years for Zeke to get out of Dallas. Yeah, like I, I don't think they're going to bench Dak Prescott. Um, but I think it, he could struggle, even though they have a pretty good receiving core. I don't know. I just hate Dallas. So do I. Giants are kind of fun. And then our first Monday night game of the season, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Buffalo Bills, taking on Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson, the New York Jets. Is this where the Jets start their Super Bowl run? Uh, I'm going to say hell to the no. Okay. Uh, even though Stephen A. Smith's sources are saying Stephon Diggs isn't happy, mm. at least for this one week, it won't matter. Right. Because, listen, I have the Jets D in fantasy. I hope they play well. <laughs> get me a pick or two sauce. Let's get let's get some nice numbers. But. I I just I don't see the train just getting off to the. It's possible. Mm-hmm. It is possible. Listen, I didn't believe in Colorado. Dion made me believe. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers might make me believe that the Jets could tr- make a run this year, but I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. And I have faith in the Bills, so I'm going with Buffalo. I'm gonna go with Buffalo as well. Um, I think if Von Miller was playing, it would make it even easier to go with Buffalo. Because we've seen the Jets kind of struggle with protection. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. Buffalo is just so good. And they, they got off to such a strong start last season. I think they're going to kind of do the same thing. It remains to be seen if they'll keep it up or not. But uh, I think it's going to take the Jets a minute to to get going, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, there's our NFL picks. Um, we have a couple minutes. So I do want to kind of um, – do some preseason awards. Who do you think is going to be the NFL MVP? Baker Mayfield. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Not Baker Mayfield. My NFL MVP is going to be, it's more like, most likely from the AFC. Could this be the year Lamar breaks through? I mean, he's will, already won one. Will Aaron Rodgers have another high-level season? I'm going with Patrick Mahomes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not even – I'm not entertaining the other possibilities that maybe could happen. Mm-hmm. We have no idea. We know what Pat Mahomes is going to do. Like, it, it's guaranteed at this point. I'm going with my uh, my guy, picking Justin Herbert. Just to smack oh, you in the face. Oh, so you you have to slam the yeah. You have to slam it on the. Oh, you're that confident. We're going with it. What's the What's the Chargers' record this season, Joey? Um, Chargers' record. They win in that division, I assume, since he's winning MVP. Twelve and five. With Brandon Staley. Well, that scares me. But twelve and five. Uh, they're all going to stay healthy. Uh, Keenan sh- Allen. That scares me. Everyone, they're, they're all going to stay healthy. Yes. Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is going to be yes. cool the whole. T- if they do, listen. twelve and five. You must be living in Fansville, Pleasantville, because that's that's some wishful thinking right there. That's where we'll be. That's so wishful. Um, offensive player of the year. Offensive player of the year. I'm gonna take a big swing. That probably won't happen, but I have so much faith that he's gonna have a big season, and that the Jaguars will be pretty good, like maybe 11 win, potentially 12 win, good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go either 1A, 1B, Trevor Lawrence or Calvin Ridley. Okay. I think Trevor Lawrence puts up big numbers, like either almost or over 5,000 yards, close to 40 touchdowns, maybe over that. Not a ton of interceptions. And Calvin Ridley over 100 catches, maybe 12, 13 touchdown catches, and like 1,300 yards. Hmm. Okay. So a Jacksonville Jaguars player. Nice. I'm going to go Hmm. Say so you don't have to give us just No. I got offensive rookie of the year still coming okay. up. Okay. I'm on Rossi, Jared Goff. I wanted to say, say I'm on Goff. I'm going to say Saquon Barkley. That's more shot. 
To me, that's almost more shocking than my pick. What do you? What kind of numbers do you think he's about to put up? I don't know. I just think <laughs> the Giants are going to be better this year, and I think that he might be more efficient this year because of Darren Waller. When was the last time a running back won MVP? Well, this isn't MVP. I mean, oh, well, yeah. I don't know. Offensive player of the To year. be honest, I don't know. Maybe did Derrick Henry had to do it. The year he rushed for 2,000. Probably. Uh, defensive player of the year. Nick Bosa just got paid. I I really I don't I don't have like a long list of players in my mind. Nick Bosa. So it would, ha- it would have to be obvious. Yeah, just just put T.J. Watt. Okay. Because <laughs> I was gonna go with Bosa. <laughs> All right, offensive rookie of the year. Jimmy or Gibbs. Who are the receivers in the first round besides um, Jordan Addison, Jackson Smith and Jigva, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers? Well, you say Quentin Johnston because you're nah. MVP. Nah, I'm not saying. Who's putting Johnson. up the biggest numbers for him then? Mike Williams or Keenan Allen? They said that Josh Palmer is ahead of Quentin Johnston on the death chart. Oh, honestly, I'm not even surprised. So I'm going Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, that's unanimous. All right, I'm he's, going. With he's going to get a lot of target. Either him or uh, Bryce Young. Okay. Yeah, one A, one B. No love to Bijan. You have a defensive rookie of the year. I, I can't even fully remember all the defensive players picked in the first round. Jalen Carter. Actually, actually, actually <laughs> I'm going with Will McDonald from New York. I think he flashed a ton in the preseason. He is super fast. He has crazy bend on the edge. He has a lot of moves. He, he's, he has a motor. I, just, I, I like how he plays. Mm-hmm. I think he could get close to like seven, eight sacks on a good, on a good Jets team. Okay. So Will McDonald. Um, or my one B, Jack Campbell. That's not bad. Yeah, he could be the leader of a top ten defense, potentially. I'm gonna go with. I'll go with Will Anderson. I think. Okay. I think the Texans defense is actually gonna be a little bit better than people think. Um, my one B <laughs> will be Brian Branch. You think he could be? Oh, hmm. he's going to play a lot. So. I think he might just have enough. You think he? You think he's going to be flash. starting by like midseason? Yeah, I, I. It sounds like from what I've been hearing is that they just can't can't, can't take him off, him off the field. field. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, that was just kind of fun. I figured we'd throw it in there, um, it, since we had time. But uh, now we're in we're in the meat and potatoes of football. We're in the meat and potatoes of sports season. Yeah. It's here. We get to watch here. Thursday Night Football tomorrow night. NBC, I think it's also on yeah, Peacock. Maybe the one time this year we'll be excited about Thursday Night Football. Yeah, I don't know. Because the games know. I usually schedule are like... Uh, Duds for yeah. the most part. Oh, we didn't... Did you miss a game? No, no, no. Oh. There's just... <laughs> I just was disappointed there's no Battle of the Birds in me. Oh, okay. But, uh... Alrighty. This has been Views from the Sidelines. Happy uh, NFL kickoff. See you guys next time. So Brandon Staley is going to be coach of the year, right? Because no. Justin Herbert wins MVP. And the Chargers winning 12 games means things are just coming. It's a magical, magical season for the Chargers. Not Brandon Staley. Moving back to San Diego. You're insane.